Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Living Well is the Best Revenge. This was sent to me by Cryptozoic Entertainment, and it's designed by Corey Jones, Ben Stahl, and Matteo Wilson. Living Well is the Best Revenge, and the best way to live well is by unlocking your inner power. In this dice game of strategy and chance inspired by the art of Stephen Rhodes, will you aim to unleash your point-gaining abilities or plan ahead with powerful dice manipulation? Gain points during an opponent's turn and watch their good fortune become another path to your success. Be the first to reach your full potential and transform from zero to hero. Let me show you how to play. So in Living Well is the Best Revenge, you are trying to unlock all your innate abilities. Uh, and that's these 10 cards here. Um, can't see them all because there's a lot. But uh, yeah, uh, they're set out in a tableau in front of you. Uh, and each player also starts with one reroll token. And... Two regular die and a power die. Now, the game is played over three rounds, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. So, how you play is each round, when it's your turn, you roll your dice, uh, opponent's score, and then use abilities and unlock abilities. However, at the beginning of each round, uh, what you do uh, is you determine your first abilities you're going to unlock, because right now, you don't have any unlocked. So all the players will simultaneously roll their two player dice. In this case, I roll a 10. Well, so with a 10, I can choose. So I could be like, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lock my one and my nine, or my two and my eight, or I could just unlock my 10. Uh, let's say I unlock my 10. When I unlock my 10, this goes from alone to clone, uh, and I get an additional power die. So I can roll these on my turns. Once everyone has done that, then whoever rolled the lowest total becomes the first player to take their turn. So that's the first turn of the round. But then how it goes is you roll your dice. Uh, in this case, I actually have the yellow power die. Let's pretend I didn't. Let's pretend actually I had nine and one unlocked. That's a little more simple. And I give them a roll. My opponents then roll their power die at the same time. Uh, so this goes one, let's say one player rolled a, a two, let's say. Now, how this works is if your opponent has their, uh, uh, have matches one of your dice with their power die, uh, and also has that specific card unlocked, then they will get a point. So if the purple player had their number two cowboy card unlocked on their tableau, and they roll the two with their power die and it matches one of my twos, then they get a point uh, on their board. If they happen to have two power die, they could even score that twice if they were lucky enough to match two of my die and have those cards unlocked. Then it's time after opponents check their dice to look at what you rolled. So I rolled a five on my power die. I, however, do not have the five card unlocked. I only have the one and the nine unlocked. Let's pretend instead I roll the one, just to show you how this would work. In that case, I have the dragon card unlocked, gain points equal to one of your dice. Oh, well, my dice is five. That's five points right there. The uh, dice cards that are seven to nine are cards that you can actually use uh, at any time once per turn. So these have stuff like lame. Uh, you may subtract one from your roll or Hot mess, you may add one to your roll, or hot rod, actually. These turn to fame and hot rod. And these will have like a joke from twerps to perps. This one, you may remove any one die from your roll. These are useful in manipulating your die uh, results uh, because you'll see why that's important in a second. Because after you use your whatever power die ability you triggered and the player dice uh, totals, uh, then you have to choose which you're going to unlock next. So, you look at your total of your regular player die. Uh, in this case, it's a seven. And my only choice here, actually I have two choices. I could do five and two, because that adds up exactly to seven, or four to three. I can't do six to one, because I already have the one unlocked. And I can't do seven, because that's already unlocked. I mean, now, because I flipped it. So I could be like, okay, I'm gonna flip two and five. Then, that would end your turn. As so the sort of general flow is you roll your dice, the opponents roll their power die to see if they match theirs with their cards and die, they get points. Then you use your power die. If it triggers anything, 
You can also use these dice to manipulate these. For example, on a later turn, if I roll the seven again, and I don't want to do, actually that'd be good, but let's say it was instead, uh, let's say I rolled an eight, where normally, in that case, I would be out of the round because I don't have any cards that add up to eight. However, if I use an ability like uh, Fame, I could then subtract my total by one, and then I could do seven and do three and four instead. Because if you are ever in a spot on your turn where you roll your dice and you can't get an exact combination of cards or a total, uh, then you're out of the round. Also, that's why these reroll tokens are useful, because you can spend these to reroll one of your dice. Now, as I mentioned, if you ever roll dice on your turn and you can't unlock cards, you are knocked out of your round. So the end of the round occurs when either all but one player has been knocked out or one player unlocks all 10 of their cards. And that determines when the round is over. If anyone ended the round by unlocking all 10 of their ability cards, they get bonus points by rolling all four of their dice. In this case, it's a total of nine and scoring that many points. However, if the round ends because all but one player was knocked out, then the last player gets to roll just two dice. Uh, so pretty good, eight, and adds it to their total. Once a round is done, then you flip all these back to their unlocked side. Uh, you put a pot, the yellow power die back if you got that from the 10. Uh, oh, I didn't show you this, but basically the number 10 card gives you an extra power die, which lets you activate more powers uh, and get more chances to score on other players' turns, if you happen to have that. Um, and yeah, you then just start from the beginning uh, with uh, your initial rolls and play two more rounds of the same way. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner. Uh, you can also score your unused reroll tokens for two points at the end. Uh, if there's still a tie, reroll tokens are the tiebreaker. Otherwise, most unlocked cards and so on. So that's the game. You roll dice, trigger powers, manipulate your, your, your die rolls, and... Um, uh, try to unlock your cards first. Let's go through all the different powers. Uh, drag to dragon is uh, you gain points equal to one of your dice. Cowboy to cowboy, you gain a reroll token every time you roll a two with your power die. Pariah to pirate, uh, you can steal three points from another player. Losers to lasers, gain one point for each of your locked cards. Ding dong to king kong, gain one point for each of your unlocked cards. Zero to hero, uh, another player loses half their points rounded down. And then I already went through all these. These let you manipulate your dice. Here you can subtract one, add one to your rolls. You can remove a die from your roll, and this one you can get an extra power die to roll on subsequent turns. Uh, but yeah, roll those dice, unlock those cards. Uh, try to be the first to get them all unlocked. And that's the game. So here's another game that's inspired by the art of Stephen Rhodes from this company. So getting this out of the way, the art is charming. It's pretty funny. I like the different variations like losers to lasers. Theming is cute. The actual gameplay is decent, but there are a few things that I think are fiddly. First off, one minor complaint, but why is that extra power die yellow? They should have just made it an extra of each player color because honestly, rolling three different colors of dice but two of them are the same power die, but they're completely different colors, is honestly super unclear to look at at first glance. Your brain just automatically goes, well, these two dice look completely different, so they're not the same. Oh, wait, no, they're both power dice, so I should do this. Why, why yellow dice? I don't understand. Uh, that and the whole, you get a point if your power die matches both one of your unlocked cards and one of the opponent's die on their turn, is so convoluted and all you get is one point, maybe two if you have the extra power die. It's so unnecessarily complicated for barely any reward. It's not smooth. It's just this weird like, okay, uh, I, I have the card, uh, that this match is, the, okay, I got it, one point. Such, such like dumb, <laughs> like, like just overthinking for what is a measly point. The actual cards themselves, are fun. The dice modifying cards were the most fun part. Manipulating your dice so that you can stay in the round and, you know, do the right combos is actually very entertaining. The actual power die abilities that you roll with your power die are okay. 
but some are way too powerful. The concept of trying to unlock those new abilities, I guess, with exact totals, that's fun. The point gaining is okay, it's very silly. At the end of the day, this is a decent die rolling game with some fiddliness and definitely some balancing issues with the powers, but it's fun enough. It's one of those games that's good for a laugh. You're, st you're still gonna have fun with the game, just don't expect too much out of it, and you'll have a decent time.